Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Alessia Scarpa and today I'm going to talk about the results of my master thesis research. Specifically, specifically I'm going to talk about ontogenetic changes in diet and habitat use in tiger sharks, Galeocciardo cuvier, determined by stable isotope analysis. Tiger shark is a large marine predator which is considered a top order predator at adult stage. Uh, uh, previous studies reported ontogenetic changes in diet and habitat use for this species. However, the understanding of this is mostly because information on diet and habitat use uh, are based on techniques such as stomach content analysis and electronic tracking. The problem is that both these techniques are not ideal to study ontogenetic changes in diet and habitat use, respectively, because on one side, stomach content analysis uh, provides only a snapshot of the most recent meal consumed by the shark and on the other side electronic tracking is a costly and laborious technique which is not feasible to study habitat use over very long time frames. So here we propose the use of a cost-effective technique which is called stable isotopes analysis to investigate diet and habitat use and their changes during ontogeny and this technique is based on the premise that, uh, biochemically speaking, you are what you eat. And this is both possible because organisms assimilate the, chem the chemical composition of the prey they consume, incorporating these elements into their tissues. Specifically here, we're going to use stable, carbon-stable isotopes and nitrogen-stable isotopes. Carbon-stable isotopes uh, which are expressed according to the ratio reported here, are an indicator of the primary producers of the ecosystem. And uh, the values of carbon isotopes are known to, uh, uh, to decrease from the coastal habitats to the offshore habitat. Uh, so they can provide um, an information of uh, uh, where actually the shark, the, our consumer, lives. Uh, on the other side, uh, we're going to use also the nitrogen stable isotopes, which are an indicator of the trophic le level occupied by the consumer, and but also they indicate the nitrogen composition of the prey the consumer consumes. So here, for the first time for tiger shark, we're going to use a uh, bird debris tissue, and we're going to apply stable isotopes analysis on this tissue. And the advantage of using vertebrae is that this tissue does not turn over. So um, basically, the, it incorporates the chemical elements and which are not replaced. And uh, this way, vertebrae can provide lifelong ecological information. With that in mind, the aim of this study is to um, examine the isotopic composition of vertebrae of tiger sharks collected in Australia to assess potential shifts in trophic niche, diet, and habitat use during ontogeny. And on the other side, or moreover, we are also going to determine if the isotopic composition can be influenced by other factors, such as sex and location. So um, our vertebrae uh, were obtained from existing collections from uh, sharks caught in Western Australia, Northern Territory, and Queensland. This is how a vertebrae looks like. So we have this central part, which is called centrum, which has a double cone structure, which extends outward from the focus, which is the star in the figure. And we use a linear precision saw to uh, cut uh, sections from this centrum. So our sections that we can see here, in here in the bigger picture, we display only half of the section. Um, our sections uh, consist of uh, an essential part that is called intermedialia and two conical external parts which are called cor corpus calcarium on both sides of the vertebrae which are more mineralized. The X on the figure indicates the birth band which indicates when the shark was born. Uh, after the birth band we have a periodical deposition of, verte of ver vertebral bands with an alternation between opaque bands and translucent bands. We found that there is a strong relationship between the size of the vertebrae and the size of the shark. In particular, 
uh, the size of a vertebrae was expressed as centrum radius, which is indicated here in the figure. And in particular, we found that a central radius of 15 millimeters correspond to uh, a size that is the representative of adult size. And a centrum radius uh, between uh, 10 millimeters and 15 millimeters corresponds to a size which is a juvenile size. With that in mind, we sampled all the vertebral bands above 15 millimeters as adult bands, and all the bands um, in between 10 and 15 millimeters as juvenile bands. Moreover, we also sampled the region in between the focus and the birth band as representative of the inutero stage. The isotopic composition of the inutero stage will be used as a proxy of the mother's isotopic composition, as we know that there is high dependence of the embryo on the yolk from the mother for nutrition. So these uh, bands were sampled using a micro drill and a scalpel, and then the samples were pulverized using until a fine powder was obtained. We then used a chemical treatment with a DTA to get rid of the um, mineralized part, because this part does not contain the nitrogen and carbon stable isotopes. We then obtained our um, isotopes values from a mass spectrometer analysis. And finally, we used our studio to uh, calculate a set of metrics, which together provide an estimation of trophic niche. And then we use mixed linear models to assess the effect of life stage, sex and location on isotopic composition. So here we display uh, our results of the comparison of, of trophic niches among different life stages, in particular in the figure on the left. Uh, we show a measure of the trophic niche which uh, takes into account the uncertainty in the sampling process. And this measure provides the area of the trophic niche. So we can see that there is a decrease in trophic niche from in utero to adults, but uh, juveniles and adults have a very similar trophic niche area. In the figure on the right, we uh, show another measure of trophic niche, which is corrected for sample size. And similar to, similarly to what we showed here, we have a decrease from in utero to um, juveniles to adults, and with similar sizes uh, for adults and juveniles. And it's also interesting to note that there is um, a considerable overlap in niches between juveniles and adults, which might suggest that between these two life stages, there is a um, high uh, share of uh, diet and habitat use. It is also important to note that all our niches are more stretched, uh, stretched along the carbon axis rather than the nitrogen axis. And in particular, we can see that they stretch from um, the range of values um, is from very low values to high values. Um, the fact that we found niches that are very stretched along the carbon axis is an indicator that shark uses multiple sources of nutrition throughout an individual's life. And the fact that we found both very low values, uh, values and very high values might be, ha has to be associated to the fact that, as we said before, low values uh, indicate more uh, coastal habitats and high values, um, sorry, high values indicate more coastal habitats and low values more pelagic habitats, which suggests that our shark, our sharks probably uh, during ontogeny, they use these multiple habitats from coastal to pelagic. And the fact that the, uh, the, the, the niche was not, was, um, had a limited uh, stretching along the um, nitrogen axis indicates that there is, there is little variation in trophic level occupied uh, during uh, different life stages. Um, as we said before, so in utero stage, uh, can be considered as a proxy of the mother's diet and um, uh, habitat use. So the fact that we found uh, the largest niche for in utero is an indicator that pregnant females probably feed in a, in a wide range of habitats and on a wide range of prey. Um, the fact that um, the pregnant females probably use a wide range of habitats was also suggested by um, different studies from a uh, different part of the world. In particular here, we reported one of them, which was conducted in the Coral Sea, where we can see in uh, red, violet and yellow, the range of movements of adult females, uh, of pregnant females tiger sharks, which we can see that they move all across the, the Coral Sea. 
probably um, searching for uh, suitable popping grounds and suitable um, foraging grounds. So uh, the fact that there is an effect of life stage on isotopic composition was also confirmed by the results of our mixed linear models. In particular, um, for the carbon data set, we can see that there is um, an increase uh, in values from in utero to adults, which, as we showed before, for the trophic niches indicates that there is um, um, the uh, use of multiple sources of nutrition during different life stages. And then uh, for, the, for the nitrogen data set, we showed that there is a decrease in nitrogen values from in utero to juveniles and an increase from juveniles to adults. In particular, now we're going to focus on this second plot and the fact that we found uh, higher values in inuterine comparison to juveniles uh, can be explained um, by um, the switching diet that varies from in utero to juveniles. In fact, uh, in utero feeds on a yolk and juveniles uh, feed on small prey. And uh, the difference in values that we found from juvenile, uh, in between juveniles and adults uh, in particular with higher nitrogen values for adults, uh, indicates that adults occupy a higher trophic level than juveniles. And this is probably because uh, from previous literature, we know that there is uh, a change in diet uh, with adults feeding on larger prey, which, are, which occupy higher trophic levels. Uh, here we present the results of a comparison of the uh, uh, trophic uh, niches among sexes for juveniles and adults only. And from the graph on the left in particular, we can see that um, for juvenile, uh, for both juvenile stage and adult stage, uh, females had uh, larger niches in comparison to males. And from the graph on the right, it is interesting to note that um, as the um, degree of overlap between juveniles of females and males is considerable, this overlap is almost absent when males and females are adults, which might indicate that actually there is a differentiation in diet and habitat use as the shark grows. So, um, um, the fact that there is an effect of life stage and sex on um, isotopic uh, composition of juveniles and adult stage was also uh, indicated by the results of the mixed linear models. In particular, for the carbon data set, we saw that life stage, sex and location are important factors affecting the isotopic values. And for nitrogen data set, uh, only, uh, juven only um, life stage and sex are important factors influencing isotopic values. Uh, these results were already uh, commented before, so we're going to focus on these three other plots. In particular, uh, we found that uh, males had higher nitrogen levels than females, and which indicates that males probably occupy a higher trophic level than uh, females. And we also found lower, um, higher uh, carbon values in females in comparison to males and which indicates that probably females are more likely associated to coastal habitats and males to more offshore habitats. And finally, uh, we want to um, highlight that there are probably an influence of local food webs on diet and habitat use of tiger sharks, because here we can see from the carbon values that we have different carbon values for different locations which is not surprising considering that we sampled uh, regions that are very distant from each other, which probably have different habitats and different food webs. So in conclusion, we can say that we found ontogenetic changes in diet and habitat use for tiger shark, but we stress that also sex and local food webs composition are important factors influencing diet and habitat use. So, uh, we suggest that stable isotopes and isotopes and vertebrae is a valid approach to study ontogenetic changes in diet and habitat use for a wide-ranging spe wide ranging species such as tiger shark. As future direction, we suggest to describe the isotopic composition of individual growth bands instead of bands for each life stage altogether and across a larger spatial scale. And uh, on top of everything, we also suggest to um, 
um, um, to uh, um, sample more individuals for each location, as for some locations, our sample was very limited. So thanks for your attention and questions. <laughs>